How's it going everybody? This is Mark with App Tech and in front of me, I have everything I need to build a PFSense router. Um, it's kind of seems a little overwhelming, but um, when you think about it, it's not actually that bad. We've got um, a lot of parts, got 30 minutes to build it. So um, let's see what we can do. Let's build ourselves a router. So let's go over um, the parts list a little bit. If you've been looking into building a PSense router and you've seen other videos you made with others or YouTubers, I have had some pretty bad issues making a 1U uh, router, but we've done a lot of testing and planning uh, to make sure that everything is going to fit and work, hopefully. So let's go over what we got. Um, we got a, just a simple 1U case. We have done some fitting already, so stuff has been cut and bent and drilled and hopefully all this is going to fit now. Um, we've got a mini ITX Intel desktop board. It has a dual core um, 1.6 gigahertz Intel Atom processor, which is not super powerful, but should be uh, about enough for um, PFSense. Got one gig of RAM, a dual port gigabit Intel um, network interface card, uh, power supply, screws, hard drive, um, and a bunch of adapters that I realized I needed. And if I take a look over here, you can see this is all of the stuff that we gutted out of this case because it came with a lot of stuff that is either in the way or we don't need. I took it out to clean it and I found out it's not gonna fit after all. So um, let's go ahead and start building this. Let's start with the power supply. Um, and we'll try and get this in. This is the cheapest. PF sensor router you can probably build. If we take a look down here, you can see that, um, well, we're going pretty strange. So we're going to be putting a screw through this hole right here. And we're going to be using this right here as a way to keep the power supply in place. Not the best solution, but you know, hopefully it'll work. Okay, that is really not a great job, but we're going for as easy as we can. So, you know, that's not going anywhere hopefully okay um next let's do the hard drive you really only need one gigabyte of space this is uh, 160 gigabytes uh, but i have this laying around so i got extremely lucky this case just happened to have holes right here that were the perfect dimensions uh, for our hard drive so if we'll go ahead and flip this around and we will go ahead and start screwing in the hard drive. Okay, hard drive is ever so perfectly screwed in on there. Let's go for the motherboard next. Um, the We got four screw holes right here, which are perfectly in line with our mini ITEX board. However, um, the motherboard standoffs that I have are actually not the right thread. So we'll hope that these are enough standoff with this plastic to you know prevent it from short circuiting. So. Let's just go ahead and throw this in, of course, because this is the most craziest router build ever. There is no IO shield. We're not going to bother with that. I'm not going to cut my own. And we just have to ensure that we don't over tighten these screws that will bend the board too much, you know, just until they get snug. Because this is not a great server or a router. And there we go. We have our uh, motherboard in. We'll plug in the fan just like that. Stuff that right down there. The power cables right here are not long enough. So we will need this, which is why we plan ahead. We tested all this before. Actually, I don't even know if this is going to turn on, but uh, we did see if this is long enough. So now we'll put this in and we will take this and plug this in. While we're here, we'll plug in the hard drive, which I probably should have done earlier. Go in here, just like that. And now we also need to power this fan. However, this power supply doesn't have a Molex connector, so 
we got a couple of adapters here. This one will give me more SATA ports. So we'll just do a little something like this. And then we have this adapter, which will convert our SATA into a Molex connector for our fan to cool the hard drive and NIC. This goes into here, and then this will go and power the hard drive. Okay, final step is to get our network card, which unfortunately will not be able to have its bracket because it doesn't fit. Oh, I also got this right angle adapter too, and this just goes in right like that. It wobbles, it's a little crooked, but there you go. It is all put together. We have our server completely done, being built. It is quite silly how it actually looks. Um, let's figure out where these little guys go, the front panel connectors, how I'm going to get this lid to close, and we will call it good. All right, so it is about a month later, and now I'm recording this part of the video. So there was uh, several things that happened um, along the way from when I first made that original build until now. Um, first of all, it is up and running, it is fully functional, it is awesome, but like many other YouTubers who have tried out making a 1U a rack mount router, it is not easy. First of all, like I speculated, the lid did not close because uh, the cable management needs some serious work. Luckily, I was able to get it to finally close. I had to flip the hard drive around, move around a couple of connectors, and luckily the thing finally closed, so we were good on that. Now the problem was when I tried to boot the system, with the network card installed, it would not post at all. The fans would not even turn on. Nothing would happen, and I could not get it to turn on. Whenever I unplugged the network card and pulled that out, it worked perfectly fine and I was able to boot into the BIOS. So I did a little bit of looking and I found out that my motherboard is actually only having a PCI slot, not a PCIe, which is what my network card is. This usually wouldn't have been a problem and I would have thought about this ahead of time, but I actually bought the network card before I bought the motherboard. So that meant I had to go out and get another network card. Uh, speaking of that, it is fairly hard to find a gigabit network card that only has a PCI connector. So because of that, I ended up only getting a single port gigabit um, NIC. I did want two ports, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to use that for, so it wasn't a major issue. And with that new network card installed, it booted perfectly fine. From there, I was able to go into the BIOS and I learned two things, one good and one bad. The good thing is that the, despite the age of the system, it is a 64-bit architecture. That means that I can run the latest version of PFSense and I no longer have to use the deprecated version that only supports 32-bit. That means that I will get updates for a little bit. Speaking of that, this does not support hardware encryption. It doesn't support the hardware and crypto key that is required for future versions of PFSense which means that this system will get left behind when they do start requiring hardware and crypto in the future. Right now it's not required and it's not a, something that you really need right now, but this is going to be left behind when they do start requiring that in a future version. I did run into a couple problems with the installation, not really the installation, but the setup. First of all, I had issues with uh, my computer actually being able to connect to the uh, router and get an IP address in order to access um, PFSense admin page. This was fixed just by resetting it again, and then I was able to get in. Because I am an Apple fan, I wanted 10.0.1.1 as my default gateway IP address instead of 192.168.1.1. And that worked for the most part. Whenever I plugged the WAN cable into the router, I could not access the uh, uh, the login page anymore, and I was getting a self-assigned IP address. 
I figure this is probably because the uh, WAN IP address is within the range. The, the LAN is supposedly supposed to be on here and it was just losing its mind. And when I do deploy this, it's not gonna be an issue because I will have my actual uh, global IP address. But right now I was plugging this into my current network, uh, which is signed at like 110.0.1.123, which was the, the well within the uh, IP address of the LAN on there. So I think it was kind of freaking out there. I did reset it again, and I just kept it the default 192.168.1.1 because not a single device in my network has that IP address. So when I do deploy this and connect it to the modem, I will change it back to whatever I want it to. But for now and testing, it's uh, the default. So after all that stuff, I was able to get it up and running, set up, configured. I spent the last couple of days configuring settings for how I want it to, doing some DHCP lease configurations, and that sort of stuff. It is all ready to go. I am ready to deploy this. I did today just buy two more sticks of RAM. This only has two RAM slots, but right now it has a one gigabyte stick of RAM. It's okay for now, but right now I'm using 60% of my memory and I haven't installed any packages yet. So I'm gonna swap this out with two two gigabyte sticks. I'm gonna max it out to four gigabytes. And um, the good thing is about this new RAM that I bought is that it is low profile. So it's gonna sit a lot lower than this current stick of RAM. The lid is gonna be able to close a lot easier and it's gonna be pretty good. So there we go. We are finally done. I'm done with this video. We're not gonna talk about this anymore. We are done building a router. It was a fun process, a lot to learn and I had a good time. So. If you have any questions or you want to see more, let me know in the comment section below and definitely hit the subscribe button. We're throwing this along with a bunch of other stuff in a server rack that I just bought. It's going to be pretty cool. You'll be able to check out my new rack. And that's pretty much it. And I'll see you in the next one.